Yellowstone supervolcano hydrothermal explosions. The eruption of the White Island, North Island, New Zealand volcano December 9 are lessons to be learned for the Yellowstone supervolcano. We know that Yellowstone has over 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 geothermal, hydrothermal areas. Geothermal areas. This is on Caldera Chronicles today, January 27. They come out every Monday, as we know. This week, column written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Contribution for this week is from Saul Hurwitz, research hydrologist at the U.S. Geological Survey. December 9, 2019, the fatal hydrothermal explosion, also called a phreatic eruption. A hydrothermal explosion is an explosion that can occur when hot water within a volcano's hydrothermal hot water system flashes to steam, very hot steam, and it th this way breaks the rocks and throws them into the air. It's trying to uh, give way. It's also called the a phreatic eruption. It occurred at White Island, Wakari. Uh, the uh, volcano is on the North Island of New Zealand. The volcanic island is 30 miles from the north northeast coast of New Zealand's North Island. It's a volcanic island, this uh, White Island volcano, and the explosion spewed rocks and toxic gases and launched an ash plume that surged outwards and rose to four kilometers into the air. That's 12,000 feet. Now the plume is the particle, uh, the vertical part of the mass of the erupting debris and volcanic gases rising directly above the volcanic vent. So this, even though it was a hydrothermal explosion, it also had um, a plume of ash. Columns usually spread laterally into plumes or umbrella clouds. Now there were uh, people on the island at that time because, you know, a lot of these islands have volcanic tourism. Now, from what I remembered uh, uploading a video on this at that time, is that there were uh, earthquake swarms at White Island Volcano of the Island. There were earthquake swarms, they were increased. There was deformation, there was inflation, and uh, the geologists were monitoring it, but they did not expect uh, such uh, an eruption, obviously. It was not expected. Now, there were other events that took place in the 1880s and the 1930s because of the miners that were mining sulfur from this area, from the crater's rim, and that collapsed under an eruption. Now, the White Island, the Wakari, is a tip of a submarine stratovolcano. A stratovolcano is steep conical volcanoes built by the eruption of viscous lava flows, tephra, and P flows, the pyroclastic flows. They're usually constructed over tens of hundreds of thousands of years and may erupt a variety of magma types like basalt to rhyolite, and they typically consist of many separate vents. It's uh, synonymous to a uh, composite volcano. Now, it's uh, the submarine stratovolcano at the northern end of the Taupo volcanic zone. The Taupo is a supervolcano. So it's not far from there. It's a, it's a supervolcano that erupted about 27,000 years ago, and uh, it was a, a type of a, of a uh, an, an extinction event volcano. There are anthropologists that claim that after that eruption, there were only about 2,000 human couples left on the Earth. That's astonishing, isn't it? So this is the area of the Tapo volcano. Uh, North Island of New Zealand and has been active for at least 150,000 years. Uh, for the past 40 years it has been New Zealand's most active volcano, the White Island volcano. And White Island is monitored by GeoNet, that's the agency that operates New Zealand's geological hazard monitoring systems. And like the USGS volcano observatories, GeoNet provides eruption updates, volcanic alert levels, summaries and monitoring information. Volcano monitoring agencies rely scientific relay the scientific information to the government agencies and land managers so that they can make informed decisions regarding closure at active volcanoes. White Island erupted many times in recent history, with the very frequent eruptions from 1976 to 2000. A major eruption formed a new crater in the year 2000. 
and small eruptions occurred in 2012, 2013, and 2016. The volcano had been showing signs of unrest for several weeks before December 9 explosion, as we said. In October, seismic tremors and sulfur dioxide gas emission rates were at their highest levels since 2016, indicating an increased likelihood of an eruption. On November 18, GeoNet raised the volcanic alert level to 2, indicating, quote, moderate to heightened volcanic unrest, end quote. White Island is a privately owned and private tour operator set policies on whether to visit the island or not, because it's a private island. It's not a government island. Although the elevated GeoNet alert level indicated there was a heightened potential for eruption hazards, the island remained open for visitation, unfortunately. Now, um, in uh, 2014, uh, they had uh, uh, an event in Japan's Mount Ontake, a small hydrothermal explosion. That's another uh, volcano. Of course, we know Japan has many volcanoes. And these hazardous events are challenging to forecast because they occur due to subtle changes in the volcano's hydrothermal systems. The processes preceding the explosions are typically localized in areas that are much smaller than the spacing between monitoring instruments. Now, what do these hydrothermal explosions have to do with Yellowstone, which is a super volcano, which has, as we know, over 60% of the world's geysers? Hydrothermal eruptions, that is, explosions happening in most cases frequently. And one of these pictures are the Biscuit Basin, Yellowstone National Park, these types of events are the most likely explosive hazard from the Yellowstone volcano. Hydrothermal explosion at Biscuit Basin in Yellowstone National Park events are most likely explosive hazards from this uh, volcano. So, what do these hydrothermal explosions have to do with Yellowstone? Hydrothermal explosions are the most likely Yellowstone's various volcanic hazards at the, and the potential for additional future explosions is not insignificant. Hydrothermal explosions in Yellowstone that form craters greater than 328 feet wide occur on an average of 700 years. The largest hydrothermal explosions in Yellowstone occurred after an ice cap more than uh, 0 0.6 miles thick receded from Yellowstone's plateau that was about 13,000 years ago, that was around the last uh, uh, Younger Dryas Ice Age, the mini Ice Age, 13,000 years ago. Smaller explosions in Yellowstone, forming craters one to a few meters across, occur on average every two years. Every two years, smaller craters from hydrothermal explosions. Some recent examples include the explosion of Excelsior Geyser, in Midway Geyser, ba Geyser Basin in the 1880s and in 1989, the explosion of the Pork Chop Geyser in Norris Geyser Basin, the 2009 explosion of Wall Pool at Biscuit Basin, and the small explosion of the Ear Spring Geyser in the Upper Geyser Basin in 2018. One of these explosions harmed people, and the Biscuit Basin explosion was actually witnessed by a group of geologists. The uh, Excelsior geyser eruption uh, as a violent hydrothermal explosion. Uh, the Excelsior geyser erupted in a series of violent hydrothermal explosions in the 1880s and the early 1890s. And one of these eruptions, shown in the colorized postcard in this uh, link I'll leave below for you, uh, they were the largest such events to occur in the Yellowstone region in historic times. So, uh, yeah, they were lucky to get a picture of that. And it was an ex in a hydrothermal explosion. So, now the land manager in, um, okay, now monitoring the data and observations generally show when an area has a higher potential for hydrothermal explosions, sometimes the signs can last for weeks, as in the White Island volcano of New Zealand, but sometimes they happen too close in time to the explosion to be taken for warnings. At Ontaki in Japan, signals preceded the 2014 explosion lasted only minutes and were only recognized in retrospect. The land manager in Yellowstone is the National Park Service, NPS, which is one of the consortium members of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, 
NPS is responsible for enforcing rules to ensure visitor safety. They use monitoring data and interpretations by USGS and other Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists to identify changes in the hydrothermal activity, the geyser activity that is, that could pose hazards to anyone nearby. This information prompted the National Park Service to close parts of Norris Geyser Basin July of 2003 and parts of the Upper Geyser Basin September 2018 in response to changes in the hydrothermal activity. The lethal hydrothermal explosions at White Island in New Zealand and Mount Ontaki of Japan emphasize the importance of seismic uh, scientific research onto the processes that precede these explosions and the signals they might generate, as well as for better monitoring of hydrothermal systems in general. These explosive events are also, uh, they also highlight the need for good lines of communication between scientists, policymakers, and land managers, and for more public awareness of these unique hazards. I'll leave a link below for you for this. This is on Caldera Chronicles USGS. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.